Okay, uh, in this problem, we have two masses being hung from a ceiling. In fact, two charges, two charged masses. Uh, so these are called Q2 and Q1, masses M1 and M2. And they make angles theta1 and theta2 with the vertical. And they're hung by ropes of equal length L. Okay. And uh, first of all, this is a level three problem. So it's a little bit involved, but because it's also electrostatics and just the application of Coulomb's law, uh, you can't really complicate things too much with just two, uh, two charges. So some of the complication is coming from the mathematics and the statics part, uh, rather than the electricity part. Uh, now here, when you first read the problem, uh, you might have noticed that uh, they're mentioning that these theta one and theta two are small. And uh, perhaps you did not notice this. I didn't notice the significance of that uh, at the first reading. But uh, when you try to solve the problem, it turns out that this is actually uh, something very important. So these are small angles. And as such, uh, we can actually use the so-called uh, small angle approximations. Now, what are these? Well, uh, the small angle approximation is uh, sine theta is approximately theta. And cosine theta is approximately 1 minus theta squared by 2 and tangent theta is approximately theta as well. Okay. So these are the small angle approximations. It just follows from a Taylor expansion or Maclaurin expansion of these trigonometric functions. Uh, and as I said, I didn't notice this uh, initially, but uh, when I started thinking about the problem, I realized that this will be quite important because if you're looking at the general case, if this theta and theta two are large, uh, then in principle, uh, these could be at different heights. Okay? And if they are at different heights, then the problem gets uh, very complicated because when they are at different heights, the electrostatic force between them is not going to be perfectly horizontal. But if the angle is small, then they actually do not, do not change their height or the change in the height is of the second order in theta. So they will be at the same height. So we are going to have a situation uh, where uh, uh, the electrostatic force between them is going to be horizontal. And this simplifies things a lot because this is a very familiar situation where you uh, have some vertical and something that's uh, hanging, just being pushed by some electric force and being pulled down by gravity. And of course, all of this in a static case is balanced by the tension force. Okay. Put some angle theta over here. So this is something very familiar, and we know how to handle this. But if this was with angles, then it will be uh, perhaps too involved. Okay. All right. So uh, for this problem, they are actually asking uh, for a number of cases uh, in part A. Uh, they are saying that the charges are equal. No, sorry, uh, the one charge is Q, the other charge is two Q, and the masses are equal. And they are asking for the ratio theta one over theta two. Okay, so I will raise this to fit everything over here. Okay. So Q1 is equal to Q, Q2 is equal to 2Q, and M1 and M2 are both M. So what does this tell you? Well, and they're asking for the ratio theta one over theta two. This is part A. Now, what does this tell you? First of all, the fact that the charges are different doesn't make a difference. By action and reaction principle, they should be applying the same force on each other. So the electrostatic force exerted on Q1 by Q2 is the same as the electrostatic force exerted on Q2 by Q1. So they both feel the same horizontal force. And because their masses are the same, they also feel both the same vertical force. Then the situation between these two is completely symmetrical. Right, this is just flipped over that one, and theta one over theta two should be equal to just one. Okay. There is actually no need to do any algebra. You can just write this down, and that's a perfectly uh, acceptable solution. Again, this relies on the fact that these two are small angles, and because of that, they're of the same height, at least to first order in theta, they're of the same height. Uh, and so the electrostatic force is completely uh, horizontal. Okay. Now, for part B, I think they are keeping Qs the same. 
So Q1 is equal to Q, Q2 is equal to 2Q, but now M1 is equal to M, and M2 is equal to 2M. So now the situation is not completely symmetrical, uh, but instead uh, what we have is that this has more gravitational force acting on it, and this is going to uh, lead to a different situation. Okay? So how does the, this uh, ratio, uh, this uh, ratio of the gravitational force to electrostatic force determines angle theta. If that ratio changes, that angle theta is also going to change. Now, we can draw a free body diagram for this. So I'm looking at this mass over here, the electrostatic forces to the right. Uh, and this angle is going to be theta. This angle is going to be theta as well. Okay? So because uh, this is an equilibrium, this is a, a static case, the horizontal component of the tension force should be cancelled by this horizontal force, electrostatic force, and the vertical component of the tension should be cancelled by the vertical gravitational force. So let's write this down. So these are, of course, vectors, but I'll drop the arrows uh, to indicate that I'm dealing with magnitudes. So the vertical component of this is Ft cosine theta should be equal to Fg, and Ft sine theta should be equal to uh, vector step. Okay. All right, now I can divide these side by side. Uh, divide this one by that one. I'm going to get tangent theta is equal to F electrostatic divided by Fg. Uh, but because of the small angle approximation, this tangent theta is in fact equal to theta, okay, or approximately equal to theta. And now the Fg is the same for both of these uh, sorry, uh, the electrostatic force is the same for both of these by action and reaction principle. If G is twice as big for the second mass because it has twice the mass of this one. Okay, so the ratio theta one over theta two is going to be, so this one is going to, the theta two is going to have a larger denominator, so the number is going to be smaller. This is denominator, it's just gonna be two. Uh, and again, I, I did not uh, make any calculation. I did not even write down Coulomb's law yet. Right? The only thing I used was that these apply some force to each other, away from each other, so along the line that connects these two, uh, and use the action and reaction principle. Right? Now, for the part C, they are saying that for these two parts, determine, uh, estimate the distance, okay? so this distance between them. So I'm going to divide this problem into two parts, well not really two parts, but it's I think much more practical to calculate it this way. So I'm going to look at the distance of one of the masses uh, from the vertical that separates this, uh, just the vertical thing that goes through the pivot point, and the other one, and then we'll just add these up. Now how can we determine this D1 and D2? Uh, well, uh, again, we can use the small angle approximation, and but we actually don't need to because we already calculated the ratios. Uh, so this D1 is going to be L times tangent theta one. Okay, so this is now part C. Uh, and uh, this that ta tangent theta one is going to be L times, just using this formula here, the electrostatic force magnitude for the first one and the gravitational force for the first one. Okay. And this you can write very easily. This is one over four pi epsilon naught times uh, one over four pi epsilon naught Q1 times Q2 divided by D1, D2 squared. Um, and this is going to be uh, just M1 times G. And you can write something very similar for D2. So D2 is going to be L times F electrostatic two divided by Fg2. And again, for both cases, you can actually uh, write this down, and you're going to get two equations for two unknowns, right? So this is going to be D1 that involves on the right-hand side because of the denominator of this electrostatic force, uh, something like D1 plus D2 squared, and likewise over here, but two equations for two unknowns, uh, you can in principle solve it. Right? I'm not going to solve it because uh, there's a solution manual uh, for this problem, and I'm sure it, it is actually being solved there. 